Hey mushroom fans, it's Anna McHugh out looking at mushrooms on a Saturday morning. Uh, we've had a little bit of rain, much to my delight, and so I've managed to scrape up a few chanterelles. I'm going to have a really wonderful and uh, delightfully top chanterelle pizza this evening. So I'll show you a couple of my specimens so that you can get a really good idea of uh, what chanterelle mushrooms look like and uh, where to find them. But I also want to show off a couple of the other things that I found today. Uh, first of of which is a mushroom that I really think is beautiful. This is Redibolitis ornatipes, and uh, this is uh, what you would call a bolete type mushroom. So boletes uh, have a sponge underneath the cap instead of gills or instead of some sort of, um, you know, uh, like waffly undersurface. So what you have uh, underneath the top of a bolete is basically, um, you know, again, a spongy layer, and that's where uh, the mushroom spores come from. In the case of Ruddy Boletus ornatipes, you have a sponge and oftentimes a much larger mushroom, but uh, this, this species is really uh, remarkable and easy to identify because it has uh, reticulation all up and down the stem and reticulation is basically this netted appearance it basically makes the mushroom uh sort of rough to the uh the touch and uh retibolitis ornatipes really is quite uh, unusual in that it has reticulation all the way down the stem so you have a lot of mushrooms that have reticulation a lot of these uh spongy underbottom bolete type mushrooms that have reticulation but retibolitis and i uh remember retibolitis because it's reticulated bolete uh ornatipes which means the ornate foot uh so basically it's very ornate and has uh you know reticulation and it's bolete so that that kind of helps me that's the amalgamation of memory tricks I use to remember uh, the species name. But uh, again, this reticulation going all the way down the stem is really distinctive. It is also a bright, bright yellow mushroom, and it is yellow all over, sort of a lightish, uh, you know, um, lemony yellow color. Sometimes as the mushroom matures, the uh, top of it takes on almost this sort of pale, like washed out gray uh, appearance occasionally. You can also see this mushroom stains uh, my hands yellow quite radically. And this isn't always the case with these mushrooms, but this is actually, uh, the stain is really, really uh, robust. Like I, I used a little bit of um, uh, hand sanitizer and, uh, you know, alcohol based and it did not get rid of the yellow stain. So this is uh, an edible mushroom. I don't typically eat it. It's not super remarkable, except, I mean, it's remarkable from a, um, you know, a photographic and uh, aesthetic perspective because again, this reticulation, it just gives it this whirling, swirling appearance that really, uh, you know, catches my fancy. While we're on the subject of boletes, let's talk about a bolete that I'm not going to uh, identify. Suffice it to say, it is uh, a bolete that is reddish and yellowish on top, has a uh, sort of a yellow um, spongy layer underneath, but with slight tones of oranginess, a double wide uh, stem, and a bluing reaction. And I'll talk about the, uh, the blue bruising uh, that um, is a very common feature with boletes in a moment. I would make a random stab at uh, Suiellis. Oh, Suiellis. Okay, so it's Suiellis lellis. <laughs> Suiellis uh, loridus is a possible species uh, that this could be, which is uh, basically, you know, reddish, uh, yellow to brown, but not all that brightly colored, uh, largish mushroom on top with uh, this uh, yellowish color underneath and some, and, you know, a dark uh, blue brown, uh, excuse me, dark blue blackish um, sort of bruising reaction. But, uh, you know, boletes are very, very challenging. Their color changes are quite remarkable. But one of the things that you'll find with uh, identification of boletes is one of the most important features is to determine whether or not it oxidizes and gives you some sort of bluing reaction. So this one, I know what it's going to do, but I'm going to show it to you because it is one of the more remarkable and interesting bits of sort of macro chemistry that you can uh, do when you're, you know, uh, identifying and looking at mushrooms in the field is uh, there is a uh, uh, chemical called uh, uh, 
xerocomic acid uh, and that becomes variegatic acid. Uh, I'm probably doing some pronunciations badly, but uh, essentially it is um, a orangish pigmentation, but when it oxidizes, it loses an electron and it turns blue. And so the long and short is um, when you have mushrooms, I have a very, very large ant on me and uh, I would uh, well, I invited him to go elsewhere. Uh, but, you know, the the long, the TLDR version of this is that you have um, an acid that turns a bluish color when it comes into contact with uh, the air. And so it is essentially the same as, um, you know, an apple having a browning reaction. It's just oxidization. So we have, uh, you know, a little bit of fun chemistry here, but not all uh, boletes or not all mushrooms have bluing reactions. This is also different from the bluing reaction of, um, you know, psilocybin mushrooms. So, uh, zero comic acid and, uh, variegatic acid. Uh, again, not a chemist. I, uh, do however, love to look at the different mushroom colors that emerge, um, as we, uh, dissect them and deal with them. The other thing that, uh, I'd love to point out about this is just how beautiful the, uh, a uh, spongy layer underneath uh, a bolete mushroom can be. I just, you know, from an edibility perspective, the consistency of this can be undesirable. So like, you know, and many of these mushrooms are edible and quite tasty. And oftentimes I will just eat like the, uh, you know, fleshy cap on the uh, inside. This one I'm not going to take home. I have chanterelles, but uh, you know, despite that, that, uh, sort of almost baleen whale looking thing, uh, you know, that you have going on with the sponge is something that always catches my eye, especially when you have a mushroom that, uh, has this blue staining reaction. And sometimes like, um, the, and I don't know if there's actually a technical difference between staining and, and bruising. So if I'm using the wrong word, it's oxidization that, that triggers a, a blue coloration reaction. But, uh, you know, um, I really, enjoy observing that, especially because with boletes, you oftentimes have reds and yellows as the uh, undersurface. And so when you have these blue blooms happening on these nice, deep, elaborate tubes, I get, uh, you know, very pleased. And um, and the blue on this is kind of a blackish blue. That's another thing about that. Uh, let's try it one more time. Suillelis, Suillelis, Suillelis. Okay, so Lellis luridus, um, that is uh, the color of the bluing reaction is characterized as blackish. And certainly when it comes to uh, the blue that you observe, this is on the darker side. Uh, and it is a uh, medium speed. Sometimes you cut a mushroom in half and you'll just see an explosion of blue, uh, at, you know, almost instantaneously. And this one, you damage it, it almost immediately starts to become apparent, but it's not super duper strong. All right, so let's talk about our chanterelles just for a moment here. Um, you know, if you're not familiar, I think that wasp is gone. Okay. <laughs> having a really good time here. Uh, so if you're not familiar with chanterelle mushrooms, they're very um, popular edible mushrooms because they're quite uh, easy to identify. The lookalikes are uh, both not really all that similar if you have uh, seen them both in person. And then also, um, you know, with the exception of, uh, I would say the jack-o'-lantern mushroom is probably the most problematic lookalike for chanterelles. And it's a really pretty big difference between the two of them. But if you're not familiar, these are mushrooms that grow on the ground. They oftentimes have this sort of flowery uh, sort of uh, trumpety shape. And um, a lot of times in the chanterelles, you'll see a little bit of uh, like um, mutation, basically. It's almost like the gills or the false gills uh, that are really just little wrinkles underneath. It's almost like you have emergence of little uh, bubbles of it on the top and middle of some of these mushrooms, but very frequently you'll get sort of a funnel shape as the mushrooms mature. Uh, when they're younger, however, you don't necessarily see, I'm going to try to find one that isn't quite as funnel shaped. So that's really iconic for a mature chanterelle. And uh, you also, instead of having like proper gills, you have false gills. In the case of this species, whatever uh, cantharella species this is, the false gills are very, very, uh, you know, superficial. They, um, you know, kind of rub right off. And they also, this species has a very nice sort of fruity aroma. Not all chanterelles do. Um, and so I'm, I'm delighted that that's, uh, you know, a particular feature of these, uh, 
these chanterelles I found. And you notice I'm being a little evasive about which specific chanterelle species they are because there are a lot of them and I'm not an expert. Um, and so I don't know. Um, they could be Cantharellus deceptivus. They could be Cantharellus... Uh, uh, phasmatis, which is the ghost chanterelle, or something else entirely. But, um, you know, they do have sort of a pale uh, undersurface. This is a younger version, so this is before it sort of takes on that flowery, um, you know, uh, sort of upward um, exposure of the false gills. But you can see that they're very, uh, you know, forked and uh, not very deep and blade-like or gill-like at all. And then finally, when you open the mushroom up and slice it in half, it's really nice and, uh, you know, consistent. This was a beautiful, you know, just like string cheese after a fashion. So it's nice and pale on the inside, even though it's sort of carroty yellow on the outside. And I have forgotten, and I should not, I have, I should not have forgotten, uh, this Galliella rufa I wanted to share with you. This is uh, also known as the peanut butter cup mushroom. So this is uh, a nice and chubby, uh, blubbery mushroom. It's definitely uh, like it's sort of gelatinous on the inside, but it's really, really robust. I guess some people do boil the heck out of them and make them into like gummy candies. I've never done that. Uh, but the thing that makes them really easy to identify is first of all they grow on wood and you have this uh, sort of nice dark chocolatey brown uh, cup shape on the outside. It's a little bit on the soft side. It's not furry but it's um, you know non-slippery and non-wet and just a little bit on the wrinkly side. So it's almost um, you know it's a little bit newt skin-esque um, I, I would say. And then on the inside you have a much lighter sort of um, you know uh, peanut butter uh, color and uh, you have a nice little crater that uh, is where that, you know, that lighter color is and that's where those spores come from. You also have a little perimeter of that crater that you have just a little bit of hairiness, uh, kind of almost, um, there's one really adorable uh, eyelash cup fungus that's like this bright, bright red and it has these little eyelashes on it and Galliella rufa has a little bit of that action going on. It's not as, uh, you know, pronounced. So I love to find this mushroom is just a cheerful little thing. And it's also fun to, to pull apart because as I mentioned, you know, it is gelatinous on the inside. So you open it up and it's kind of this like gray, uh, you know, gray gummy worm, um, like gummy worms from uh, some very, very, uh, you know, sketchy and old vending machine in a uh, rest station in a state that I, I don't know. I, I won't continue. I will suffice it to say it feels like a gummy worm that's been around since the mid 1980s and is, is sitting in the very back of some sort of, um, you know, uh, vending machine. I'm going to cut it there because I'm rambling at this point, but Galliella rufa, really fun to find. Some people again do uh, boil it and, you know, flavor it and uh, make it into a sweet treat. Uh, but for me personally, Personally, I just love the fact that you have this sort of peanut butter cup looking mushroom growing on wood that you can open up on the inside and then uh, wax as philosophical as you want about where you might find a gummy worm that looks just as gray and just as worn out as it does.